Welcome back to the Gaming's Grounds channel. It's your boy Action Jack, and I didn't want to have to do this, man. I, you know, I'm going to duck and dodge all types of responsibility and accountability for this. So I'm blaming Sandstone for his live he just did. I'm blaming Shadow for all his tech situations. I'm blaming Andre for his videos. The only one that's in the clear is Jay. Jay didn't do nothing to influence this. And then also I'm blaming the world of Twitter for making me do this video. Yes, I'm blaming y'all for making me do shit. <laughs> so, but I had to do it. I had to do the video. Um, I didn't want to take up too much time on the show last night. So I was like, why not just shoot a video and kind of get all my thoughts out there and see what the masses think, right? So if you don't know what I'm talking about, as we all know, and as you see on the screen right now, the Steam Deck was announced and you know, it's due to come out for those that were, you know, early and getting the pre-orders. It's supposed to come out December of this year. And then for some of us that did do the pre-order, either for the sake of doing it or just actually wanting one, um, you know, you kind of range from December 2021 all the way out to Q3 of 2022. So that's just the console in itself, not the dock. We still don't know anything about the dock. Still don't know the pricing of the dock. None of that. Right. So. My main premise of this video isn't to go over the specs because I'm very sure most of y'all can read. And if you can't, that's a big damn problem. So what I want to do is make sure that I kind of go over my thoughts for everything that's here, right? So as you see right here, as far as the price points, I went for this 512 gigabyte one as far as pre-ordering, just in case I wanted one. I don't ever want to be in a situation to where some more information comes down the line and then, you know, I can't get one. So I'm interested to see what all this can do because a lot of times people get caught up in numbers and the spec sheet and it's not telling you as far as performance really goes. And I'm going to show you guys something later on that's going to kind of give you an idea of what it is that I'm talking about, right? So I noticed right here in the fine print too, it says effective storage capacity capacity subject to change based on size of operating system and formatting technology all models include a micro sd slot for additional storage which is cool um now as far as how those games are going to run off the sd storage by the time you get done with your 512 256 or your 64 that's to be seen i know as far as you know your switch games because they're not as big they're not as demanding it's not a problem but i can only imagine a uh, Call of Duty, uh, a Cyberpunk, a Final Fantasy 15, or anything like that running off of an SD card. Because if it was truly efficient, I think that's something that we would have seen with these two consoles that we have with the PS5 and the, and the Series X. But they use some form of, you know, well, at least with the Xbox, they use some form of a memory card that's SSD that shares the same speed for you to continue to use quick resume and do all the other stuff like that. PlayStation, not so much because they wanted to use the expandable memory of the M.2, which you cannot expand at this moment. Um, so I'm curious as into how that's going to function. How is that going to work? I've seen videos on YouTube seeing that it is plausible, but at the same time, the speeds went down dramatically. And from what I'm hearing, if it ain't 4K, 120, loading at five, and within 5 to 0.5 seconds, or if it's not you know the best of the best, then it ain't worth it. So are you willing to try to find a way to dump anything off into the SD and just have all your games there and how many games is going to hold up for those Call of Duty players? That's done. That 512 is gone for, for any other players as far as modding goes and all the expansions and everything that PC tends to do. And the reason why you want to get a PC that's going to run through your, your, your space quite a bit. Even for myself, I do gaming on PC. I do video production. I do music production and I have three hard drives within my pc itself i have a uh, m.2 drive that's one terabyte and then i also have two external hard drives which they are i think it's uh two terabytes respectfully so i got quite i have quite a few uh as as far as space goes and i don't even need that much but i just decide to do overkill with shit because you just never know right so let's move a little bit further into it i don't care nothing about all that as far as the stick you know they talk about you know trying to avoid drift you're not going to avoid drift. It's going to happen to the best of them. There, any small part, when you look at these small little intricate parts and pieces, it's bound to happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say it's going to be widespread, but it's one of those things that could still possibly happen. But I'm glad that they're paying attention to it. So that way they don't fall into the same you know realm as Nintendo and PlayStation with their with their drifting situation, right? Um, I'm curious as into why they mentioned this dot when it's not ready. 
and you know it's not even in the realm of being ready as of right now for, as far as we know but it's a good uh thing to have when you start talking about truly wanting to get that pc experience but then also want to have a handheld situation in a hybrid nature kind of like the switch to where this dock has to have some some guts in it for this to be sending up to 4k and all those stuff when we go down to the specs out you know you'll see what i'm talking about but you know it looks like it definitely has the dvi um hdmi usb type c you have your ethernet port and then you have like three usb a uh, ports here so i'm curious as into what all is going to be put in that small dock for it to give the boost that this uh particular handheld if you will would actually actually need or have in this situation so I just wonder there was some specs on this page, but maybe that's the other pages and everything else. But the one key thing around this in itself is, is on paper blowing the switch out the water. That is not to be denied, none of that. But we've seen time and time again, what's on paper does not always equate to performance. Even if you can have the most decked out, specced out PC, you still got to worry about bottleneck. You still got to worry about settings. You still got to worry about any other issues as far as what's going on in the background, any type of, uh, you know, underlying issues that you can't possibly see. PC in itself, because it is open-ended, has the opportunity to run into some, so many more issues than, all, than a closed-off system like a PlayStation or like an Xbox or like a Switch. It's one of those things to where you're taking a shot. And when we're talking about in a handheld factor, running steam or at least you could say like a variant of steam <clears throat> and you have you know this small form factor while still ginormous it seems but there's still a small factor form factor in the sense of pc handheld it's very interesting on how this will all function and how this will all work now we can get into what main people are touting is the main purpose as into why they're getting this which i think is a crock of bull because if you want to look at the pc crowd the PC crowd for years have have been saying there's no reason for handhelds. They don't like to play their games on the go. Then they also state that, hey, look, you got to have the best specs out there to play the games at the highest frame rate, at the highest fidelity, at the, you know, you can be able to mod and do all this extra shit. You're not going to be able to do that with this. You know what I'm saying? I don't see this comparable at the highest level as far as what you can get in gaming right now. And that's typically what the PC master race tends to continue to tout and spew out of hey look this is what you're supposed to have so i don't see how this appeals to them um even for handheld gamers nine times out of ten most handheld gamers if there's no exclusives when you look at the sense of the switch they're looking at it from a retro standpoint when you talk about emulation i don't know about anybody else but i'm not paying this much for no fucking emulation i'm just not especially in the sense of there's actual handhelds out there dedicated to emulation that cost half this price when you talk about retro games, I'm not talking about current games because I'm not in the business of pirating current games. It makes no sense because they're available. But if you're talking about the generation before and, you know, the last generation and before makes sense. And I don't even really count the last generation because PS4 games and Xbox One games are still being made. So if we're talking about Wii U on down, then, OK, if you don't have any means to get the games, then you do what you got to do based off of however you go and purchase. But I will, at least for me at least make the attempt to go and get the game because a lot of y'all like to just steal to get it for free just because and then wonder why these companies don't make what they make. So at the end of the day, when I look at the main purpose for the Steam Deck, for those talking emulation, you'd be stupid to spend this kind of money. For those talking about, you know, I'm a PC gamer, you typically already got a rig that's already blowing this out the water. So what the hell is the point? Because even trying to counter this with something else, it doesn't seem like it, it works out. And then, you know, for the retro crowd of playing, you know, the older games or anything else, it's just it's just kind of a weird system to pick up. Now, if we talk about emulation from the, uh, you know, hardware standpoint of stationary consoles, you can kind of do that right now with the Series X for $20. You do the develop, developer situation and then you go about loading whatever you want to load on there. It's been shown that it can run. So you can get you an Xbox Play, all the Xbox games, and you can also do... The emulation of you know whatever emulator you have and the roms and isos and things that you actually have the only thing that you're not playing is the playstation first party games but let's be honest if you got an xbox you're not necessarily caring about first first party playstation games any damn way right so 
at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I don't see a purpose to where I just quoted $500 can get you more memory as well as emulation and better running games. <clears throat> While, yes, you could say the portable aspect, nine times out of 10, most of y'all are not playing in portable. I play in portable, there, but there's only a handful of games I play in portable. That's, that's a big issue. So even if I was to get something like this, the dock will come in handy, which I'm curious to see how much that costs because I think that's going to be in a range of maybe $100, $200. But yes, the handheld aspect of it will come into play, but I'm curious about the touch pads. The dock will come into play because you know it's supposed to boost up the, the fidelity and everything like that. But my main gripe and concern is that OS. I'm curious as into how all this functions and how this all plays along, right? But let's... Get off of this because I'm pretty sure you've heard enough of it. And let me show you two other things that I found very interesting. So <clears throat> one of the uh, the key things that, you know, Shadow brought up to me was definitely a, a YouTuber by, I think it was uh, ETA Prime, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Let me, let me double check because I don't want to um, misquote and not really, yeah, ETA Prime. So he mentioned, and he did a video on this one this one X player, right? He showcased the whole thing, gave a breakdown as far as the specs and, you know, how to go about getting one, the availabilities and all this other stuff, right? And when you look at all the complaints that are out there in regards to the Switch that even the, the Steam Deck itself has not solved, <clears throat> this right here, the one X player kind of solves it. When you talk about a bigger screen, and even when it goes down to, uh, let me go to the specs real quick. Okay, bigger screen, you got 2560 by 1600, so it's not within the 800 you know, P or the 720P like the Switch in the, in the deck. It has up to 1600 with 358 PPI, the 16 by 10 ratio. It's still got an LCD screen, but you know, um, I mean, OLED, whatever the case may be, LED, it is what it is. You know, I, to me, it's not too big of a difference to, for me to care. Um, it's got, you know, it's a touch screen. You can get a configuration of i5, i7, you know, different variants of i7, the 16 gigabyte of LPDDR4 um, RAM, and it just comes down to the storage as well to where you can get even better storage from 512 all the way up to two terabytes. Um, having two USB type four, which I didn't even know was a thing <laughs> right now. Um, USB type three, I mean, USB 3.0, uh, you got a headphone jack and you got a micro SD card reader, right? Of course, you got the analog sticks, the D-pad, all the you know standard buttons, what have you. Um, and then he mentioned in the video that you know the back buttons that you have on this thing. Which uh, let me see if I can go to the picture of it that showcase the back of the device. Um, they don't really have a good picture of the back of the device other than right here. But there's two buttons, kind of similar, like right here on each side. That's where your volume button is. The up and down volume buttons are right there. And then you also have another uh, button over on that other side, which I forget what it is that he said is what it does. Um, but you also have the kickstand right here. This is a power button, but also it's a fingerprint sensor for you to actually log into Windows via this fingerprint sensor, right? Which is crazy, super dope. You see how big the screen is. Um, here you have you know the respective buttons of you know your menus, your start button, on the big D-pad, the sticks, which are, you know, your standard sticks. You got speakers here. Um, he said this button right here was to return you back to the desktop. And then also you have uh, this right here is a keyboard button to bring up an on-screen keyboard, as well as if you hold it down, it would, uh, you know, turn the analog stick into a mouse pointer. And then, you know, you have the turbo button, which is right here, that would actually, I guess, overclock it or boost it up even more so it can run even better depending on, I guess, whatever variant that it is that you purchase. So that in itself already just is running circles around what we're, what we're talking about getting. You know, the battery is at 59 watts, um, charger is 65, you know, it's got Wi-Fi 6 that everybody's swerving down is the best thing since sliced bread when the PS5 announced it, but none of y'all have a Wi-Fi 6 router to even do it. Um, it has Bluetooth, um, and like I said, fingerprint re reader, which is also the power button, comes with Windows 10. And the, the crowdfunding, this is where the pricing was interesting to me. If you were super early, you did your crowdfunding, you could have got the best situation for 15 <clears throat> or you could have got the lower end situation for 819. 
Now, I know a lot of people will look directly at these price points of, well, that's a lot more than what the Steam Deck is you know, making available. But once again, I was told if it was the right specs, if it was the right situation, then you should be able to pay the right price for it. When it comes down to what it is that y'all claim that you want from the Switch, you're going to have to pay for it. The only reason why the Steam Deck isn't as much as it should be is because Gabe and the crew took a hit. They've already reiterated they've taken a hit in regards to making this price affordable. So we could have seen these type of prices right here. But had those prices been there, no one would be entertaining this whole Switch Pro, Switch Killer stupidness. Like, if you want quality, you'll pay for quality. That, that's just what it is. And then even at retail price, if I'm being a buck, you talking about getting a PC that's portable. And also for this one, I'm going to talk about something else a little bit more of those specs and that nature of what you can do. That's that's a that's a good price because you got laptops that cost more than that that don't do half of this. So <clears throat> it's pretty interesting within this small form factor as well. I mean, it's definitely, you know, got the, the you know, the extra buttons I was talking about and, you know, all this other stuff. And there's other videos that, that go along with it and how you play these games and how to load them up. And this is amazing. This, this is amazing hardware. You You definitely can't beat it. And as you see, people expanding out and finding different ways. But there was one key thing that I saw um, ETA Prime do that was very interesting that, you know, we've all mentioned within the uh, the podcast of what you can do and what you should be able to do if Nintendo was to ever decide to upgrade the Switch via the dock or anything else. Uh, ETA Prime added the, uh, what is it called, the little GPU extender the little power up thing that i've shown before what i think it was Ryzen, to where you can plug it directly up to it in the usb c slot and therefore it channels through there where he had a, i guess a 2560 in in the actual setup and then it goes to your desktop so therefore he's getting killer output from that situation now that's going to be some extra money to where i've seen those run about 300 but if you're trying to get this full-fledged experience of handheld as well as pc and you're not trying to have no disparity between the two of handheld or you're talking about PC, then that's just what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to pay to play. And that's what it solely comes down to. And a lot of people in themselves don't really want to pay that money. They just want to talk about, oh, well, Nintendo should do it when they don't even understand the cost and the business behind if they were to do it. So, it, so yeah, matter of fact, perfect picture right here. Can plug up directly to it. And they even got a keyboard that I think he said also goes as a, a flip cover. Forward. so this this thing looks amazing if you truly wanted to get into it now we're going to go into um the gpd win max and the one reason why i picked this is because i was very familiar with the gpd gpd series and they had some specific wording on here and some things that you could do with this particular thing with which they call it a handheld gaming laptop hence why they have the keyboard down here and the sticks are not as prominent and the buttons are kind of right there very small and Looks kind of uncomfortable. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. It looks very uncomfortable, but they advertise it as a handheld gaming laptop. So, you know, laptop purposes is, is perfect, but as far as gaming, it looks, uh, looks a little uncomfortable. But there's some key things that I like that they did here that I didn't see on Steam Deck or Steam site for the Steam Deck, right? So, as you see right here on their website, off rip, they're telling you, hey, game fr uh, game frame rate measurements below tested games are triple A game masterpiece. FPS sequence on an i7, R7, you know, 4800U. So they're telling you up front, hey, these type of games is what you're going to get. It's typically what you're going to get in regards to your frame rates and things of that nature. And this is very important, like very, very important as far as which one you choose to pick up or which one that, that it is that you want to get because th like the uh, one X player, there's different variants that you have in place that you can select. And as you see here, but depending on what you get and what you want depends on, you know, what type of perform performance you're looking for. And they've specified it here. And that's something that I wish, I wish that Steam Deck would have done because if it's coming out in December, then that's stuff that you've probably already run tests on and you can go ahead and tell us. So that way, instead of trying to, um, you know, cater to people's stupidity in, a, in the sense of just reading numbers off and trying to match make in that nature, show me what, what your setup does. Show me what it can do in the sense of these frame rates and how these games properly run. Because if you're not showing me that, then it sounds like to me you're trying to get over. 
And if you're trying to get over, you're going to get a couple of suckers. And PC gamers like to mod shit and take stuff apart and add. And so that's their alley. But for those that don't know no better or that don't even do that, they're going to think they're going to get this, be able to download these games and play them clean without making any adjustments outside of the settings of high, low, custom, or, or ultra. You know what I mean? So I really appreciate what it is that GP, GPD Win did here as far as the site. They even mentioned a dual Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 4 ports, uh, double bandwidth, external EGFX frame rate increased by 300%. You can literally put a graphics card in here, plug this up, and then bam, there you go. And then I'm pretty sure you can plug this up to a monitor and just sky's the limit as far as what it can do. But if you want to take it on the go, you just unplug that and you get right back to gaming. And I think essentially when you get into, you know, handheld gaming in the future, right? Switch is kind of like the first one, if, if you will, to go into this hybrid nature to try to play it as a handheld and a console. But I think the one thing Nintendo can take away from all of this and what most of us have been saying on the podcast you're going to have to have an external piece to give power to that handheld piece because you can keep trying to stuff guts in a handheld piece, but it's going to get bigger. It's going to get more uncomfortable. It's going to get hotter with cooling issues, and you're going to have a situation to where it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. And it's not going to be functional for your casual because a lot of people want to look at sales, but understand that I would even go on the limb of saying more than 50% of these console sales are casual gamers. So if you can't appeal, appeal to the casual market or if you can't get the hype from the casual market, then your console does not sell that great. And that's just how I feel about it. So they've you know, done their little advertising as far as sitting down to play, lying down to play and playing on a desktop, which you know is kind of nuts. I don't think that'd be comfortable, but I mean, hell, be down, you do what you gotta do. Um, with an eight inch, eight inch screen, I just can't talk today, Jesus. But <laughs> you know, just looking at these different situations, and I, I appreciate everything they're doing, even to breaking down and being honest with you. You know, the lower the resolution, the better your frame rate gets. So, even though people be trying to get to the highest, you know, frame rates as well as the highest resolution, you're putting strain. And if you go down just a little bit more, you'll be fine. And I think that's the same thing that the Steam Deck aimed to do, hence why we have 800 well, 800p instead of a 1080 situation because. Yes, it'd be nice, it'd be cool, but a screen of that size is not necessary. It really isn't. You look at your phone all the time. Yes, they say you can do 4K on these screens, but if you go and you look at a phone that's shooting 1080, it's not anything crazy that you like, oh, shit, I can't handle this phone anymore. I can't do this phone. It's just way too much. I'm so tired of these doggone emails, but it's just way too much. And it's just amazing how ignorant people can be in that regard. But once again... The customization, the built-in, what is it, Xbox 360 gamepad within this situation where you're talking about the sticks, the D-pad, uh, the buttons, even when you look at these triggers, where it's L1, L2, R1, R2, um, dual fans, cooling pipe, um, says you can play online without the mouse, backlit keyboard. This is like this is really a laptop, a mini laptop, like they said. It, it's just, it is what it is. If you want to go the AMD route, and then on the Intel side, it's what, four cores, eight threads, and so far, so on, right? I'm not the tech guy, so that's all shadow. So I'm just reading. So I'm not going to say and act like I know what the hell I'm talking about. So I'm just showing y'all the specs and showing y'all the breakdown. And also going into, you know, single, single core versus multi-core, and they're giving you benchmark tests. And this is all the stuff I expect this team to do. Now, they can still do it. You know what I'm saying? There is no, well, you should have, and then, you know, they do it online, and I take an issue with it. They can still showcase this, but I think if you're going to be genuine – as you know uh, uh you know for a purchase show me this and then put up the pre-orders so that way i already know what it is that i need to pre-order without sometimes going to the to the fullest extent of what you're offering to where i could have possibly gotten something lower you know what i'm saying like that'd be kind of messed up if a phone manufacturer was like hey look all you can get is these variants of you know eight gigs let's say 16 gigs and 32 gigs of a phone right even though that's kind of small nowadays i'm just using those as an example but they said that's what you can do but then in essence they don't tell you oh well there are apps or there's certain programs and downloads and things of that nature can eat up all your eight or eat up all your 16 so you really need to go with the 32 and the performance it differs as well because we couldn't put enough storage in there for the performance to make sense and not die out or kill whatever it needs to kill so you need to go with the highest one. So I think they should have just been forthcoming and, you know, given us a breakdown 
of what it could possibly do because we're still talking about PC here to where most people will benchmark every damn thing. They show off their speeds. They show off how great they can run a game. You know, the frame rates, you know, the CPU, the GPU, the, the memory dumping, the modding, all that stuff that comes along with the PC nature, Steam just avoided completely. They gave you numbers. They showed you a design. They told you it was available and they allowed you to pre-order. So <laughs> to me, that still feels a little disingenuous, but you know, do what you got to do, handle handle your business. But honestly, when it comes down to the Steam Deck, I like it. The, the style of it, I don't really care for, but I like it. I'm hesitant about it. I pre-ordered it just in case they do give me more and I like it. The fact that I'm set at the Q3 2022 mark, hey, I'll let y'all test run it. Let y'all figure all that out to see what's wrong with it. So in the event that I need to get my $5 back, I can. If not, just spend it on something on the Steam store. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things to where I don't look at this as competition for Nintendo because in no realm is this competition for Nintendo. They could have released something 10 times this and Nintendo still would have been okay. Nintendo still would have been fine. But what I will say, like I quoted on the show last night, Nintendo should think about the next iteration. You know, if they don't go what we think should should happen of having the Switch exist and then introduce that stationary console and then have the whole Switch to the stationary console situation like the Wii U, I think that's something they should do. But if they don't do that and they continue this cell phone type route to where you get like an upgrade with cell phones annually, but in this case, it seems like it's every two years with Nintendo, I feel like they should just make the upgrades as much as they possibly can as far as fix stuff cosmetically or make some adjustments where it doesn't kill the pricing for the handheld but focus on that that dock focus on the dock make it have something within its guts so that way whenever you plug in that 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 switch via usb type c not only does it look good on your on your entertainment center but it gets the boost to keep up or to give people what they want or to get prepared for the games that you yourself are set to make and to take away one more excuse from third parties as into why they don't develop for your console because we already know there's going to be more but <laughs> it gives you the handheld nature which we understand you don't want to do too much but for those that play dock exclusively or they go back and forth that'd be nice you know i can play handheld and it's still in a nice form factor to where it's not uncomfortable and it's really nice and i can take it somewhere without it being bulky or bringing too much attention and then when i do get home i'll plug it up and then i'm running let's say 4k uh, you know, 60 or whatever the case may be, depending on the game and depending on what's in that dock. So Nintendo could definitely, you know, open up the floodgates and have the appeal and have the name to do more than Steam would ever be able to do. But <clears throat> for me, they're going to continue to develop this Switch OS and it's going to be here to stay. It's just like iOS is here to stay. Just like, you know, um, you know, Samsung's One UI is here to stay. You know, Android is here to stay. Like these, these UIs are in place and they just update them. And I feel like that's what Switch and Xbox are currently doing right now. So I don't know. I feel like there is better product out there than the Steam Deck, but it's all depending on how much you're willing to spend and exactly what it is that you want. For me, I wanted a dedicated PC for gaming, and I was going to sit it by my TV, but I wanted kind of like a, um, uh, what is it, like a compact unit. And so I'm still on the search of how small of a case can I get without causing overheating without bottlenecking or anything else to where it looks just as comfortable as my Xbox Series X does next to my TV to where people don't even see it. Like people don't even see my Xbox, but they see my PlayStation. But I want something like that for my PC. So that way in the event that I say, you know what, I'm packing up my Xbox, I'm packing up my PlayStation, I'm going full on PC with the headaches. <laughs> then I want to be able to have something that looks good, that functions well, as well as can be upgradable, upgradable, and then has all my games as well as all the emulation that I tend to do, right? So the handheld aspect of it will always be Nintendo for me. If they stop doing it, then they stop doing it. There's nothing I can do about that, but it all comes down to what it is that you want and what you truly want as opposed to just trying to stir up shit and try to be a troll on, on Twitch or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. I see it all over the place. So... I'll leave it with this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll leave it with this. The Steam Deck is going in the right direction, for sure. Nintendo is going to follow suit eventually in their own way. Not exactly like this, but in their own way, because we have to still understand 
that's a closed off system. It's not a PC. Will there be more competition? Not to Nintendo, but within that PC handheld realm, for sure. It, it, it's always been there. It's just people don't pay no attention to it until now. Will I get this? We'll see. Will it sell great? I don't think it will, especially because it's not going to be in retail for the time being. So I honestly, I don't think it will. And then of course, you know, when scalpers get their damn hands on stuff, it's, it's a hot mess. So we'll see how that works out. At the end of the day, for the people that like to troll and say this is a switch killer, you ain't been funny. You never been funny. You just rehash and reusing shit that you've seen somebody else do, like most of y'all tend to do. But it, it all comes down to what it is that you want to play. And if you have not been playing on PC as of late, I don't know why this would entice you. If you've been playing on Switch with the great games that Switch offers, I don't know why this would entice you. Believe people with that you do shit you want to. You're gonna, it's going to be a rude awakening when you get this and you realize that, okay, all I got to do is follow these examples on YouTube and then they break down to you that for every game you download, which is taking up memory, by the way, that you don't have a lot of, this is what you're going to have to do and this is how you're going to have to set it up every time you want to play X, Y, and Z game. Let people play you for stupid. Like, let them play play dumb because emulators are not just plug-and-play situations. They never have been. They never will be. I, be. I think the Super Nintendo is the only... Super Nintendo and Down are the only emulators that function properly. Even Dolphin don't function for every game like that. So, I don't know. Like always, man, y'all leave your comments down at the bottom. Hit me up on Twitter. I appreciate a lot of y'all feedback. I've been trying my best to either like and comment back to y'all. However, you know, I see fit. So I definitely appreciate the support. Keep keep sending people my way, man, because I, I want to have some conversations. I want to get people on this on this channel and really sit down and politic and see why they think the way they do. You know, not in the negative light, but see if they can, you know, get me to understand because I'm a man of let's sit down, talk, and let me get an understanding as into what you're talking about and where your resources and where your knowledge is coming from opposed to, well, I'm just regurgitating what the next man said. Come and talk to me, and we'll we'll see if we can get to an understanding. And if not, then, hey, it is what it is. We had great content. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's been your boy Action Jack, and I'm out of here this time, man. Peace.